How are your members reacting to this phase one, even as we await really clear details on it? Well, I think it's a, a wait and see situation right now with China and the deal. Uh, as they say in, in trade, nothing's agreed to until everything's agreed to. With China, nothing's agreed to until everything's implemented. And I think Ambassador Lighthizer was right when he suggested that the key here is whether or not China will actually follow through with the agreement. Uh, for dairy, uh, there may be opportunities, we just don't know. Uh, it appears as if there may be some sanitary and phytosanitary barriers that may be removed. But again, with China, you have to actually see them in action uh, before you can determine whether or not it's going to be a good deal or not. So we're pressing pause on reaction there, but we can react perhaps a little bit more to the USMCA, even though it also hasn't been signed yet, but at least there is a framework there. How are your members reacting to the idea that exports to Canada are now given a green light? Well, they're excited about the opportunity that the USMCA presents in terms of new market opportunities in Canada and an elimination of the Class 7 discriminatory pricing system that has uh, distorted powder prices uh, throughout the United States and throughout the world. Uh, they're also excited about the opportunities that the New Japan Agreement has created for dairy uh, to reopen and to re-engage in that market as well. So uh, from in terms of short-term opportunities, I think the USMCA and the Japanese Agreement are where we're focused. Uh, if something gets worked out with China and it, in fact, results in additional sales, that's all to the better. Well, I want, to, I want to go right back to China to that point precisely because you, you alluded to this, but nothing in the, in the framework that we've seen and the reports that we've seen of phase one of U.S. and China points to enforcement mechanisms. How will this be enforced or do you still need more answers on how this will be enforced? I think we have to take a look at the actual details of the agreement once it's signed and once it's released. Uh, there has been discussion about the possibility of re-engaging in, in terms of the tariffs being uh, re-engaged or increased or, or re-established. That may be an enforcement mechanism. I think Ambassador Lighthizer at one point indicated that might be the way in which uh, you would enforce this agreement. But clearly there has to be an enforcement mechanism because the Chinese are famous for agreeing to quite a bit but never following through and delivering on their agreement. So that's why there's a wait and see attitude on this particular agreement, especially as it relates to dairy. As we look into next calendar year, does the phase one suggest that phase two might not happen in 2020 and might have to wait till 2021? Or, or, or is there anticipation that phase two will begin in next calendar year? You know, I think phase two, if it really involves a fundamental change in the way in which China does business with the rest of the world, is going to take a considerable amount of time. And it may take more than just the United States raising these issues. The reality is that many countries get mistreated by China in terms of investments in China, uh, the intellectual property issue uh, that was also raised. So I think it's going to be incredibly important for the U.S. to work with the rest of the world uh, to go to China if we're going to see fundamental change in the way in which China does business within uh, China.